Hi everyone, it's Ian here from Crack Maths and welcome to tutorial 56 on how to connect 3D shapes with the front, side and plan views. So let's first have a look at this shape that I've drawn here. Okay, it might not look like it, but this shape that I've drawn is actually <laughs> currently a square, okay? And this is going to be the front view of the drawing that I'm about to draw. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a side to this shape and the side is going to go here. The last thing I have to add to this shape to turn it into a cube is the top. And in this topic, we refer to the top of a shape as the plan view. Okay, so here we go. We've got the front side and the plan view. For the front side and plan view, we simply have three squares because these are what we would see if we were looking at this shape from any of these directions. So if we looked at this cube from the front, all we'd see is a yellow square. If we looked at it from the side, all we'd see is a pink square. And if we looked at it from the plan, from above, all we would see is a green square. And so these are what we call our front, side and plan views. Now in functional skills maths, we have to be able to identify the side, plan and front view when the shapes change a little bit. Okay, so let's go back to the isometric paper and let's draw a slightly more complicated shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more cubes. Now I've added these extra cubes, what I'm going to do is colour them in. So I've coloured the cubes that could be seen from above, the plan view, green. I've coloured the cubes that can be seen from the front, yellow. And I've coloured the cubes that can be seen from the side, pink. Let's start off with the plan view. So the plan view is anything that can be seen from above. So if we start with this far square here, this green one at the back, I can draw that there. I can then see that there's a square that's attached directly to the side of it. Then in that square, I can see that there's a square that's directly below it. And then, although it's not attached directly below it, again, I can see that this other green square from a view from above will appear to be directly below it because it looks like they share this side. So from above, the plan view should look like these four squares in the shape of a walking stick. Now let's have a look at the side view. So I'm going to work from the top to the bottom again. So if I go from this far back square, what I can see is that there is a square directly to the side of it. Then I can see that we have a square below it, another square below it, and then a square to the side of that. So we should get this shape that looks a little bit like a Z or a backward Z. Okay, so now we have the plan view and the side view. The last view is the front. Now, <laughs> the front view is actually a little bit tricky for this shape because I can see at the very top, kind of shifted back, that we've got a yellow square. We don't actually know how many yellow squares there are there because of the way that it's been positioned. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume that for this scenario, it's just the one. And in future examples, I will be less ambiguous. <laughs> so what we've got is we have this top square. And then although it's not in line with it, we can see that next to it, if we're looking at that directly from the front, we're going to have a square directly to the side. Then underneath that, we're going to have a square that we're going to see. And then underneath that, there's going to be another square. OK, so let me draw this out. OK, and there we go. The front view and the plan view happen to be exactly the same. Right, let's have a go at some questions. <laughs> OK, so here we have question one. And question one says, draw the front elevation of the shape below. Ah, okay, so here we go. We've, um, oh, it's an interesting shape. So we can see we've got some kind of like shape that's made up of cubes. Been asked for the front elevation. So I can see that, that this time is the pink sides. So let's start from the top and work down. Okay, so if we're starting from this top square, I can see that there is another pink square directly below it. I can also see that there's another pink square directly below that even though it's just been pushed forwards a bit. Then I can see that there's another pink square to the side. And then I can see on that pink square, there is a square below. So I'm gonna draw all of these down and see what we get. Ah, here we go. So here is our front elevation. Perfect. Right, let's have a look at question two. Okay, so question two says, draw the plan view of the shape below. I remember the word plan. The plan means the view from above. So in this question, that means we're looking at the green squares. It's always helpful if they haven't shaded these squares in to shade them in for yourself, because that does really allow you to take a good look at the 
yeah, at the shapes of them. Okay, so for this one, I can see we've got the square at the top, and then directly below that, because um, we've got to kind of imagine that this shape has been twisted to the front. If we're imagining where we stood, we're looking directly at the pink ones. So we've got to picture that this has been twisted. So we've got the first square, and then directly below that, we've got another green square. And then directly below that, we've got another green square. And then if we think about this being twisted, that means that this last green square is to the side. So what we get is we get an L shape. OK, let's try another question. Right, OK, here we are. No surprises for what this third question is. This question is all about drawing the side elevation. So let's have a look. Remember, let's start from the top and work down, thinking each time what square is connected to the square that we've just drawn. OK, so first of all, we've got this top yellow square. Then below that, we have another yellow square. Then below that, we've got another yellow square again. Then to the left, I can see that we've got a square. And then we've got another square in the same direction. And then we've got another square just below it. So here we go. You should have a shape that looks something like this. Wonderful. OK, if you want to pause here and have a go at some practice questions, there's loads of examples available at tutorial56 on crackmath.co.uk. Otherwise, stick with me now and we'll have a look at some scenario questions. So here we have scenario question one and it says below is the sketch of a house draw its plan elevation okay so what we have to do for this one it's like the cubes but it's just a little bit different okay where the shape isn't made entirely of cubes so what we need to do is we need to draw the view that we see from above okay so what we see when we look at this is we see that from above hopefully you'll spot that this will look like a rectangle. If we considered the base of the shape, we can sort of see that this shape is really just a cuboid with a triangular prism on top. So actually from above, it's going to just look like a cuboid as the triangular prism sits entirely on top of the cuboid. So what we need to do is we need to work out the dimensions of this base. Okay, so I can see that the base of this cuboid is going to be roughly six centimeters by two centimeters okay in your exam example you'll get a bit more detail probably but what we now need to do is we also need to identify the measurement at which the roof starts peaking because although that's not necessarily going to change the shape of the plan view we are going to have to put lines where every crease is in order to show that there is a roof there so to me it looks like that peak spans over three centimetres and the peak is directly in the middle. So that would be at 1.5 centimetres. So now we have all of this information, we can put it on our diagram. So first I draw my cuboid, which is two centimetres by six centimetres. And now I'm going to mark my line at three centimetres. And now I'm going to mark another line at 1.5 centimetres. So here we go. This is what we would expect to see for the plan drawing of this house. OK, let's have a look at another scenario question and then we can conclude it there. OK, so here we have scenario question two and scenario question two just says draw the side elevation of the house below. OK, so it's the same house again, but this time we're going to have a look at it from the side. OK, I've pulled out my highlighter to highlight the bits that we'd see if we were looking at the side. And now what we have to consider is what would the dimensions of these be? Now, it's important to remember that if you're looking directly onto a slope, you actually cannot see if it is a slope or if it's a rectangle. So the measurements that we're going to want for this slopey bit is actually just going to be the height of that triangle. So we decided that the depth in the last question was two centimetres. So I'm going to make that bit two centimetres again. Now we can see that the first bit of height is two centimetres as well. And I think the roof looks like it's got a height of two centimetres also. So all in all, what we're going to want is we're going to want a rectangle that's two centimetres wide, then two centimetres high with a line, and then another two centimetres high, and then stop. So here we go. This is the rectangle that we should have for our side elevation. I hope that's been useful for you. If you need more practice at this, make sure you hop over to crackmaths.co.uk and have a go at tutorial 56. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. So long.